Hello there, and a huge welcome to this week's episode of Enlightened Leadership with Gina Gardner on Gnostic TV. I am absolutely thrilled to have my guest, Ali Nicole Wow, today. She is and has been my mentor for many years, and she is an amazing lady. If you want to give her her full title, it's Minister, Majesty, Almighty, Ali Nicole Wow. She's the ultimate spiritual multiplicity pioneerpreneur who becomes all things to all with more than 300 publications on Amazon and over a thousand online platforms that serve diverse industries. She is an ordained minister, a graduate of two Bible universities, cross-trained in over 200 areas and is a certified spirituality life coach. Welcome, Anna Nicole. Thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, uh, Gina. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you and your listening audience. We're going to be discussing refining your soul's evolution through spiritual metamorphosis. But mm -hmm. before we get to that, just give people a bit of a potted for, uh, feel for your story, because it's pretty incredible. <laughs> well, well, thank you. And yes, I'll try to condense that because it, it certainly is a, a pretty massive journey um, to come into uh, a full expression of who I am as Majesty Almighty. And that is a, a spiritually divine uh, journey that has led me to this point. And because we're going to be talking today about the refinement, there's a lot of refinement to my journey that trying to actually explain it in a linear format wouldn't do um, a lot of service to um, those who are on the evolutionary edge. And a reason for that is because it's speaking of the caterpillar aspect evolving into um, the butterfly aspect. And so there's a lot of breaking down of that particular journey. But just in kind of a nutshell, um, what I found in my journey as I was, if you want to call it inching along, and I have a background, as you you mentioned, in terms of different Bible degrees, and I have uh, a lot of different diverse levels of my spirituality. So within my journey, there's so much, it's very loaded. Um, but what was happening is a lot of my older story uh, was breaking down, and a new narrative was being born for me to actually not identify with the older aspect of who I was, but to um, come from the place of what was forming, what was metamorphosizing, because that's where our world is going. Um, and that's the new world that's emerging. So there was a lot of different, I don't say challenges, but uh, it was a beautiful and brutal experience of coming from a certain part of my spirituality that then decomposed to now being um, a new creation format. I think many people looking at what's going on or feeling what's going on, mm -hmm. recognize that there is something very different about yes. where we are now and where we're going. Mm -hmm. so we've had many conversations about it's time to let go of the old and even get let go of the than the old new because yes <laughs> very very different right 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 but before we sort of get into that I think yes. for many people I think one of your most powerful metaphors and you have many is the is when you explain about caterpillars and butterflies and true mm -hmm. purposes and I think when we're talking about a spiritual journey mm -hmm. that's such a powerful um, metaphor to use and I'd be really grateful if you could uh, share that with our listeners and our viewers. Oh absolutely absolutely and so when we go through this human uh, metamorphosis experience because we're uh, human beings and having the spiritual experience and we can liken it to the other side too we're spiritual beings having the human experience right <laughs> and and so when we um, live these caterpillar lives and even at our best um, version of ourselves in that form pales in comparison to what our unique divine encoding is for us to come forth to be the full expression of who we're meant to be. And so just like every caterpillar has the encoding to become a butterfly, every caterpillar actually doesn't become one. And for various reasons, sometimes they expire within that caterpillar life or they enter into um, the chrysalis. 
but they never actually make it through the metamorphosis. And so in the human aspect, and that's one of my um, expanded works is Divine Human Butterflies, is I find that within that process, the reason why a lot of um, people don't reach their full potential, not just in spirituality, but just in general, is because they try to go through the metamorphosis stage in a very transformational way. And that's the way that it's been taught. We we learn that you tra um, that caterpillars, they transform into butterflies. But the way that I teach it and the way that my journey progressed was that it was very evolutionary because you become something completely different. It's not like a, let's say, a tadpole who grows up to become a frog. That's just a bigger version of the same thing. But when we look at the metamorphosis, a caterpillar doesn't become a bigger caterpillar. It becomes a new creation, right? <laughs> something completely and utterly something, different. Yes, yeah, something completely different. So when we undergo this uh, new human metamorphosis in a spiritual format, we, of course, are still in our same encasing in terms of our our body and physicality. Human body, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly, the human body. But um, who we become as an individual, our anatomy starts to shift and starts to change because we start to unlock this unique divine encoding, which then reformats our way of being into a new expression. And that's what happens within the uh, caterpillar journey is that it sheds away an old identity, right? It it breaks down, it decomposes, and then it emerges and reformats into something new. So because we are spiritual beings and we have a soul, right? Um, our soul goes through this metamorphosis journey too. It, it breaks down um, and becomes more refined um, so that we learn who we actually are during this phase of our journey versus uh, where we've been, how people identify even with past lives and um, just different aspects, you know, along that nature is that a lot of that starts to break down and it's no longer really relevant. So let me just share this, Gina, just like in opening up and you know this kind of about me, you, you're rarely going to hear me talk about anything that is uh, like from a previous version of who I am um, because of being made new every moment. And so when you come into your more metamorphosized experience, if you think about even uh, a butterfly, a butterfly doesn't remember and recall its caterpillar life <laughs> because it's because it's become something completely different. Now, in the human experience, of course, we have memories of what we once were, um, but we learn in spiritual evolution to identify more with the new way of being of, of who we are, because that's what's true for us. So within the soul's journey, there's content uh, about us. There's archives within our, our soul, within our DNA. But when you start coming into this newer version, newer and truer version of you, a lot of that content is not as relevant as we probably thought it would be for what we perceived that our life purpose was going to be, because that was very much in the caterpillar stage. Because we're entering into a new world, the new world is requiring a new type of not just human experience, but a new type of spiritual evolutionary experience as well. I think for many people who are listening to this or who are engaged in their own spiritual journey, and if you're watching this or listening to this, then you are going to be someone who is engaged in your own spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Many people get caught up in trying to fit into the mold as was but my sense check and certainly we've had a number of conversations about we're going into completely uncharted territory yes and mm -hmm. that whilst some of the skills and the resilience and so on that we've learned as we've got to this place it's a time to look out and to look to be the um a new version of ourselves the butterfly version of your, ourselves yes Mm -hmm. if we still keep looking backwards then we haven't got the momentum to take us forward to where we need to be 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I'm so glad you said that. And that's why when I meet someone um, who has not been a part of my journey before, I don't typically start with individuals even identifying from that version. And there's nothing wrong with that version, but it's just not true. And they're with me in the here and now and moving evolution um, forward is that we are in the now and we have new narratives. And what happens is sometimes we're so used to identifying with an older version. We've adopted that. Most people tend to know themselves in that identity. Um, but when you go through this unique metamorphosis process, uh, you tend to reference that. And again, nothing necessarily wrong with that. It just is not a truer version because the soul has evolved. And Gina, most people are at this juncture in their spiritual evolution, their soul's evolution, where they know that it's something more that they're here to be, but because there's not a lot of demonstrations of this new way of being, a lot of people feel uh, very lost and they feel like they're stuck there in the middle. And that's where um, the conversation that we're having now can help to clarify is that people have been in a metamorphosis, but the reason why they can't really form to come into the new creation format is because there's not enough of the shedding away of even what people, as I mentioned before, thought that your life purpose was going to be, thought what your spiritual um, nature was going to be. You start to identify everything in a very different way, even your perception around God, around source, spirituality, um, all of those different formats take on a new creation. And so it's hard to identify with that because, uh, again, we don't really know. And that's where the refinement comes in, Gina, to kind of illuminate what the soul's content is now so that people can start to um, adopt and adapt to the new information about them that's coming forward. There's a lot to unpick there, but there's a, a two yes. or three things I'd like to unpick. And one, yeah, is, definitely. I think human beings like a sense of sense of certainty. Yes, even when that sense of certainty is an illusion. You know, <laughs> yes, we like, true. we like that sense of that we have control over <laughs> our lives, and in reality, we have control over ourselves in terms yes. of how we react to things, what we say, what we do, mm -hmm. how we think, and so on. But I think we are moving at such speed into new surroundings, new mm -hmm. a new environment, that for me, one of the things about our spiritual journey, my own included, is the being comfortable with being uncertain. Yes. Being in a, uh, and we had a com conversation a couple of weeks ago where, you know, going into a, a landscape where there are no, um, there are no defining features that we can say, oh, that's that where if you go that way, then you'll find such and such. Right. There's no signposts because we're into something which is so new. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was talking earlier today with somebody who was talking uh, about, you know, moving into the age of Aquarius and things are moving at such a pace. Uh, and I think for many people that that sense that, that things are moving and shifting and things that they could count on before they can't count on now leaves people feeling deeply um, disturbed by who am I when I'm in this new landscape? How do I operate? What is it I am supposed to do? And the thing that I've learned from you is that this is not about doing, it's about being. Beingness, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd, I'd be grateful if you would speak to beingness because that seems well, to be differentiation. Oh, absolutely. And the beingness aspect is the really the essence of the butterfly, um, if you will. And because if you think about a caterpillar, a caterpillar, even in its best life, it's still inching along, right? Can only see head on. And so when we look for certainty and we are trying to figure out our lives a certain way, even from a spiritual context, we that's a lot of efforting. It's a lot of left brain struggle, so to speak. And it gets us into more of the doing format, the more the figuring format than versus the flow that comes from being truly connected to the source within. 
And when you go through this metamorphosis, that's where the soul gets refined because then more of your source way of beingness comes forth. And so that's where you live from more of that divine way of being, which is a way of being. Source is not efforting. God is not, you know, trying to figure things out. It is just a very simplistic format that source flows and communicates. And when we operate from more of our source codes, our source way of beingness, then we are in the embodiment of beingness versus doing this. They actually, um, Gina, they become one in the same, but it's from divine right inspired action taking and beingness versus um, trying to make something happen and strategize and, and figure things out. And that's very hard for people to understand because for so long, there's never been a time in history of mankind where we're at this stage that we have to embody being this because we've been so used to the doing this aspect. I think we're wrongly named as a species. I think <laughs> yeah. Human doings, not human beings. Not human beings, right. <laughs> and I know from my own spiritual journey that that's, mm -hmm. been, uh, that's been really challenging. You know, yeah. I come from a, a long line of doers um, and you know, it's still something on a daily basis that the, the, the being still, the being quiet, getting rid of the white noise and the the need to be seen to be actively doing something. Um, I think many people, particularly those who are quite overtly on their spiritual journey, mm -hmm. want to to make a difference, positive difference in the world. Um, you know, one of the things, again, that we've talked about a lot is the need for speed because we're already behind. And I guess- Yes, in evolution. Mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, and it's time to accelerate. And that's why things are accelerating is because it's time for humanity to catch up with their evolution. And because we are soul beings, spiritual beings here, um, we have to now come into- this evolved way of being so that we can sync up and catapult with the evolution of humanity that is playing out in this, you know, spiritual experience. And so when we lag behind in our spiritual evolution, our soul's evolution, that is really the lag behind in humanity's evolution uh, as a whole, which explains uh, why so much is the way that it is. Because if you think about it with um, all of the different paradigms, whether it's spirituality, whether it's self-help, um, all of these different paradigms of development that are supposed to, quote unquote, improve who we are, um, we see that there's still not a lot of progression. And that's the problem. The problem is that there's so much new and improved, but there is no metamorphosis to become something different. And you've heard me talk about this before where we're built, we, what's happening is that we're manufacturing and building, in a sense, bigger caterpillars, but ultimately never coming into a breakdown, a decomposing, so that a metamorphosis can happen to a new creation. But this is where we are now, Gina, in humanity, where it's almost a forced metamorphosis, in a sense, because there was not the willingness to participate in it. So that's where it becomes a little bit... Um, brutal, I call it beautiful and brutal, but when we actually adopt this from the soul's perspective um, and allow the new way to come through, this is where the refinement, and there are more people, uh, Gina, that are on the evolutionary edge than not. Um, a lot of times we think that there's so many that are so far away, and they are, um, but there's a great majority of individuals who are at the cusp of trying to cross over, but they just haven't known what they're crossing over to and actually what um, why their journey has been the way it is. But when they can understand it in the simple format in the metamorphosis is that the uncertainty, the breakdown, the dark nights of the soul, the soul's content, all the inner work that's being done, but it seems like nothing's really happening, all the praying a certain way, but it seems like no shifting's really taking place is simply because at this juncture, um, we are not to identify the previous journey with the new. And so even not having the understanding or awareness of that, what it is is understanding that there is something far beyond what 
our minds can comprehend. When we start to just lean into that space of that unknown, that's when the new information can come through in terms of what the soul's purpose is now. Um, a lot of times we've been operating out of expired life purposes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what happens is when people feel like they have a calling or their lives are supposed to go a certain way according to what they think their purposes um, are supposed to be, what happens is those are stages, those are phases. And so when you reach a certain phase, it's more like looking at an acorn that contains the um, encoding of an oak tree. You go on the journey to crack open that acorn so that the oak tree can begin to emerge. That's the more larger expanded life. But if we continue to do life and do our spiritual journey, um, our soul's journey in a way that seems very linear in one dimensional we don't actually crack open to become the fullness of who we are. That's where the stuckness happens. That's where, and you've seen it even in business and, and different spiritual contexts uh, or facilitations that you've seen with others or you've you know been a part of with others where their businesses are stuck, their ministries are stuck. What they felt they were called to is just stuck and they keep trying to make it happen in a different way. But ultimately- the soul is saying that there's so much more here. Get to the oak tree-ness of who I am. Go through the metamorphosis so you can become the butterfly and beyond. But if you don't, you're going to stay stuck and ultimately you will never reach your full potential. I have a theory and I don't know whether it's a true one, but I think many <laughs> people are struggling with what's defined as mental health because they have reached that place where they yes. they're at some level they know that they're not living their their true new purpose and that there's that sense of dissatisfaction and incompleteness mm -hmm. and almost acts as a canker in terms of, of of spiritual and emotional well-being i'm so glad you brought that up because that is a very key part and it's something that i teach um and you've probably heard me talk more about this in the empathic aspect where within the metamorphosis there is a kind of what is a mental illness if you will but it really isn't but it can be perceived that way is because it is um the breaking down of a, an old life and so when that old life is breaking down because we haven't learned how to process it and, and comprehend what's happening, it definitely is an emotional crisis because it's an identity crisis. It's a soul crisis because there we don't know how to identify ourselves and, and we don't know how to make life work a certain way. What happens when the God you've been praying to that was so providing and so nurturing and now you're in this space where there seems to be a nothingness. And this is more likened to when Jesus was um, on the cross and he's like, God, why have you forsaken me? You know, <laughs> because he was in that, that dark place, but he had to have his own unique metamorphosis during that time so that he could die to the format that he was and, and resurrect what I kind of call the Phoenix Christ um, awareness where you resurrect into a new life. And so that's what our soul is here to do, is to sometimes burn up the old content of what was, even though it just really gets refined and repositioned. You don't really actually lose anything in a sense. It just, it evolves to um, its rightful place of purpose in, in your life for the new life, the new world. But if we don't allow that to happen, then you can have a very much, you can stay in a state of what seems to be mental illness, but it is a call to come up higher in a divine awareness, you know, a higher level of consciousness. But if you don't understand that, that's why conversations like these are very important is to give some context, to give some clarity to what's taking place so that when you're in that um, space, you can know how to best take care of yourself. Sometimes, Gina, it's some simple herbs that can be taken that can help to shift that awareness or different levels of work that can be done on the body to help move people you know, beyond that. Because what happens is there's a space of stagnanticity and um, blocked energy, if you will. And again, that's because these codes within us aren't coming alive. They're not being activated 
because there's not the awareness around it. And so life tends to just get worse and worse and worse. And the purpose that people thought they were here for, they're still trying to operate to bring that to pass is not happening. And when that's not happening, they think, did I get it wrong, God? Did I hear you wrong? Uh, what's, you know, what's happening? Nothing is progressing the way that it was. And simply because it's not supposed to, we have to be in that place of surrender. You're not going crazy, even though you can definitely feel like you're going bananas. Um, but just take comfort in understanding that there's more that's evolving within you and it's being able to, as the Bible talks about, die daily. And sometimes you have to die daily to a certain form. Sometimes what happens, and Gina, you can identify with this, is that you can be called to something or you feel like your life's going to be going a certain way and you are meant to do it in that format, but then you can't hold on and be married to that, even if it is kind of a new way. And as you mentioned, something that I talk about, the the uh, when the uh, new becomes old, <laughs> you have to be able to identify that. But because we're so used to grabbing onto something and then wanting to now build a framework around it, um, it is baffling to us when we have to emerge as something, surrender that, let it code up, and then anchor into something else. And this is the content of the soul communicating to us that you're so much more than what you know yourself to be. And so to refine that means that you have to be able to now see it um, in its fuller essence, if that makes sense. It certainly makes sense to me. We've got a few minutes left in the show. And one of the yes. things that I'd like us to look at, mm -hmm. when you look at what's going on in the world, there are many people who are feeling a sense of hopelessness and despair. Yeah. That there is so much um, of war and dissension and hatred. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many people who think, you know, my job is to hold the light. And mm -hmm. yet against the, the stream of negative news and so on, it's really difficult. What would you say to them? How, how you know, are we as light workers or people who are going to illuminate a different way forward? What advice have you got for them? Well, in order to illuminate the new way forward, we have to become anew. And what happens, the reason why the light can't shine as brightly, even in a dark world, um, even by those who are holding the light, is because a lot of them aren't allowing that soul's illumination to come forth. And not to any fault of their own, there just is not a lot of teaching around um, coming into this new way. So the encouragement is to be in the space of the new light. And even if you don't know what that's like, it's like building a relationship with a person that you don't know. So you start to connect to, yes, this unknown and start to develop a relationship. So then you'll know how to beam and broadcast yourself effectively. You'll know when to be the candle. You'll know when to be, you know, the, the beacon. Uh, you'll know when to be a lighthouse or a lamppost because the light needs to shine accurately. So whatever is coming from your soul's evolution that you're supposed to put out in the world, it has to be the new light that's coming forth because the old light in the ways that we've done things in leadership simply um, will not help to transition others into this newer space. That's why most feel hopeless and they feel like the, even leaders feel their way is lost because they just simply don't know how to quote unquote bridge that gap. But having the awareness that there's a new illumination that they're being called for, you're going to have to go into your soul and have that refinement journey and start to build a relationship from there. Now, I know you've got a huge amount of resources to help. <laughs> I don't know anybody who's got as many books and videos <laughs> and programs and so on. So a couple of questions. One, where can they find you and your resources if they uh, feel uh, that they can um, actually get engaged in what you're offering to help them on their journey? Oh, absolutely. And we can, you know, put links to some of those platforms because there are tons of them, uh, at, you know, within the um, description. But if they visit um, www.wowshedoesitall.com, 
um, it can help to be a bridge to a lot of the work um, that I do. And they can also visit www.allynicolewow.com. And then I'll also include um, my Divine Human Butterfly site, you know, as well. And uh, that can be, you know, linked in, in the description. But uh, this is an important time in human evolution. And I'm certainly looking forward to help be that expanded light um, in soul refinement during this time. And we're going to put all of those links in the show notes so people can find them very easily. In the last couple of minutes we've got in the show, mm -hmm. is there anything that I've not asked you that you would like to have the opportunity to say to our audience? <laughs> well, I just want to, first of all, thank you again for being here. And everything that you asked was, was great. And especially for um, a, a setup to introduce individuals to this uh, particular format of their journey because they're at a new juncture. Something that I would like to say is that it's time to live from um, your true encoding because that's the only way that you're going to unlock your greatness and the necessity for refinement of your soul's evolution through this um, spiritual metamorphosis process. It's vital because there's no other way um, to live. And like anything, Gina, we go through refinement periods in our lives. It's just that now we're at this stage where the refinement has to come through the metamorphosis. And it's time for people to be the true butterflies of who they are and unlock their greater potential. And I know that humanity is ready for that. And everyone that's a part of this experience, that's why they're drawn to this, because it's their time to live from their true encoding. Anna Nicole, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your experience and your wisdom. And if you've been listening to this, you ultimately are here for the right reason. And I would say to you, it's time to take action, to take control over your metamorphosis, because you are needed uh, and the world has never needed the illumination of people who have been on that journey and who are being that illumination more than they do now. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Please join me on the next show. You take care now. Bye bye.